Well, uh, I did not expect to be making this video anytime soon, but we're here, and I'm gonna be reading your unpopular anime slash manga opinions. A few days ago, I put up a community post, and I was like, hey, just flood the comments with, like, anything you want me to discuss. Like, literally, any unpopular opinion you have about an anime or manga, just spill it in the comments. I don't care what it is, just put it in the comments. And I got 229 comments, so if you enjoy this one, make sure you give it a like, and if it gets 200 likes, I'll do a part two. Alright, let's go. So, unpopular opinion number one. Greed Island arc in Hunter x Hunter is actually pretty good. Genthru was also the perfect boring villain to show how batshit insane Gon was. Yeah, uh, I kind of disagree with this one. I did not like Greed Island. I didn't really see a purpose for it. And Genthru again, like, I guess you can say he's a perfect boring villain. But there are many boring villains. So you're top one, but there's only like three competing with you. AOT manga ending is definitely not the greatest, but it's super overhated. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's not the greatest. Yeah, I agree with that. But it definitely is super overhated, in my opinion. I don't think it deserves the hate that it gets. A lot of Attack on Titan fans if you can even call them fans are just Aaron fanboys and at the end of the day like they want to see the 100% rumbling completed and because that didn't happen I'm pretty sure a lot of people got pissed and I think another thing was just seeing Aaron acting the way he did was kind of out of character so a lot of people flipped out about that but if you really think about it it wasn't that bad Demon Slayer is good but quite boring and lackluster in categories outside animation and fight scenes it's overrated in my opinion yeah I agree with that one as well it's not that Demon Slayer is a bad anime by any means, in fact, I actually think it's a pretty decent shonen, but like, it's not that good. Like, it's not a crazy story, it doesn't have crazy good characters, the animation is exceptional out of this world, the OST is really really good. But if we're talking like story-wise and like actual writing-wise, it's not the greatest thing that some people make it out to be. And it is definitely, in my opinion, somewhat carried by animation. There's a reason why no one talked about the manga. And as soon as the anime came out, everyone started talking about it. Death Note never gets bad. Masterpiece. So I assume you're talking about a lot of the controversy regarding Death Note's ending, or I guess you could say last 12 episodes, after the point where a certain character gets taken out of the scene. In my opinion, I think that the last 12 episodes of Death Note were solid. I do think the first 25 were better, but I don't think the last 12 were bad by any means. And I definitely do not think that it gets bad. I think the ending was very justifiable and I'm pretty sure it was foreshadowed from like the first episode. So I don't understand why people complain about a certain character dying. I think it was just a solid ending and I think the last 12 episodes were still quite enjoyable to watch. AOT chapter 131 is one of the greatest pieces of art ever in the medium. I agree with you. That chapter was freaking amazing. Large paragraph that I don't feel like reading out loud. AOT chapter 137 is the greatest chapter of manga ever in my opinion. That is a extremely, extremely hot take. It is not the greatest chapter in manga. It is a very good chapter, but it's not the best chapter in all of manga. Saying you would have liked a different ending for Attack on Titan is not disrespecting Isayama or his original ending. I agree because everyone is entitled to their own opinion. You can say whatever the hell you want to say and it doesn't really matter as long as you're not harassing the creator of the series. Real is one of the most understated manga ever. I assume you mean underrated. And I definitely agree with that. Real is like, it's such a beautiful story that a lot of people need to read. It's created by the same author as Vagabond. That's kind of all you need to know. It is truly a masterful series for being under 100 chapters. And though it suffers from hiatus, I still think it's a phenomenal read. So check it out if you haven't. Berserk's boat arc is fantastic and the second half of the story is better than Golden Age. I was agreeing with you for the most part, but until you said better than Golden Age, I just said nah. <laughs> Hunter x Hunter's biggest flaw is its extremely slow burn. Unless you're really committed, most people would end up dropping it in the first 20 episodes. I do think the first 20 episodes of Hunter x Hunter were relatively slow, and the first arc was kind of lackluster, but if you can get through that, then I mean Hunter x Hunter from then on is truly a great story. Berserk's quality of writing gets kinda good but not great after Conviction arc. Don't get me wrong, Berserk is maybe the best manga especially for me, but after Conviction, it's just something else in my perspective. It is something else. It's a completely different story, 
after the golden age arc because the golden age arc is like a completely different setting and it's pretty much like a medieval time scenario i guess you could say but conviction arc is like a fantasy magic world where it's guts trying to protect what he has and trying to find his purpose so they are kind of completely two different stories but i don't think that conviction is lacking compared to golden age i still think conviction falcon and fantasia are phenomenal arcs the attack on titan ending was originally satisfying but the extra chapters ruined it uh no i don't think the extra chapters ruined anything the ending was originally somewhat satisfying and the chapters added a realistic theme to it in my opinion and i think they were necessary and i don't really get the hate behind the additional pages 20th century boys is the best manga ever created exclamation mark if this was a week ago i would have said you are totally out of your mind and that berserk is the greatest thing ever created on this planet but i've read like almost 90 chapters of 20th century boys since then and my god it's actually a masterpiece already i cannot even put into words how incredibly mysterious and suspenseful that story is and i'm gonna have a video coming out probably in a few weeks about 20th century boys i don't think it'll be my favorite manga of all time i'm open-minded to it but i don't see it beating berserk still i respect the opinion rumbling part of war for paradise was a masterpiece i think it was really good i wouldn't say masterpiece because war for paradise itself like the whole paths thing and like the fighting that was probably the masterpiece in that arc the rumbling itself at times could be a bit boring but i still do think it was a really really well done arc mikasa is boring with no personality and her entire character is thirsting for Aaron and being a b-grade level levi I mean, to be honest, now that I think about it, she kind of does have like no personality for like a large portion of the story. But I mean, towards the end, she does get really good when she does the thing, you know what she does. Overall, she's not like a crazy good character, I would say. Attack on Titan has one of the greatest endings ever in the history of manga. My dude, you need to read more manga. Mappa Attack on Titan episodes look like a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, that's a humongous insult, but I guess it's just your opinion. I don't think that's the case. I do think some parts could be a bit better, but I do not think it looks like a PowerPoint presentation. Like, my dude, have you seen Record of Ragnarok's anime? Yo, AOT ending is f***ing awesome. Um... I mean, I guess... Eren is nothing more than a genocidal psychopath. People always go on with Eren this, Eren that, when he's just a tragic villain. And while I think he's really well-written character, I think people overestimate him much more than they should. I don't really see that to be honest. I see Aaron as a phenomenal character and nothing less than that. I see him as one of the deepest and most intriguing protagonists and endgame villains ever in anime and manga. I don't care what people think, that's just what I believe and I have an entire 30 minute video on him. Like, that's not easy to make for a regular character. Code Geass ending isn't actually one of the best endings in anime. I think it is the best ending in anime. I think it wrapped everything up perfectly and I don't really know why it wouldn't be one of the best endings in anime. It was truly a masterfully written ending. All right, this dude's got a few. AOT season four over AOT season three. I agree, FMA is the best anime original. I think you mean FMA is better than FMAB and if that's the case, then absolutely not. FMAB is much better than FMA in every way. Greed Island over York New City. That has got to be a joke. Like, there's no way you actually think that. I don't know what Odd Taxi is, so I'm not going to comment on it. An anime original ending makes more sense for the anime than the manga ending does. I definitely agree with this. There's a lot of reasons why I think an anime original ending makes more sense than the manga ending, but there's primarily a few things being the dream that Eren has in the anime and the immense number of hints that the actual creators of Attack on Titan have put out there, but I won't get too deep into it. Oh my gosh, Hunter x Hunter is such a bad anime. <laughs> no, Hunter x Hunter is phenomenal. When are people going to accept the fact that Code Geass is super overrated with so many flaws that everyone has somehow ignored and overlooked? Um, I will not read your entire explanation, but I personally don't think Code Geass is overrated. I think it deserves every kind of credit that it has because Code Geass is a series that does something that other anime have just not been able to do properly to create a character like Lelouch and to create a rebellious setting that it does create and just to have an ending that it does is truly magnificent. I think Code Geass is a top tier anime. Eren did nothing wrong and is entirely justified. I will not elaborate. 
Well, I will not elaborate either, besides saying the fact that Aaron did a lot of things that are not justifiable, like genocide. Might be very unpopular, but I like the Witch Studio character designs better than Mappa's. Um, as for character designs, I don't think that Wit was better than Mappa in terms of the actual character designs, but I think in terms of animation style, Wit Studio was definitely better. Wit created some of the most beautifully animated moments in anime that I've ever seen with Attack on Titan, and Mappa has done exceedingly well, just they haven't done as well as Wit Studio in my opinion. Hunter x Hunter is a classic, but Chimera Ant is one of, if not the most overrated arcs in all of anime and manga. Interesting. You see, I used to think this as well. I used to think that the Chimera Ant arc was really slow, and for like the first, I guess, half of the arc, it was complete ass. But I actually think Chimera Ant is a geniusly created arc after looking back on it, but I probably need a reread or a rewatch sometime soon but from what i remember the chimera ant arc is absolutely genius erwin should have lived this is a very interesting thing and i think i could make an entire video on this but i do like erwin much more as a character than armin but i think choosing armin made a lot more sense because his dream went further than just seeing the ocean erwin was a character who wanted to see what was in the basement and he was a character that always put his own life and his own ideals ahead of that of the survey corpse while his entire purpose being to be the leader of the survey corpse and the way that Erwin died was just so perfect that I think his death was very fitting in that scenario. And I don't think that Erwin being revived would have made a lot of sense to the story as much as it would have if Armin got revived. So while it is very controversial, I think that Armin being the one to get the Colossal Titan powers makes a lot of sense. I'm here to clarify that the ending was dog shit. It seems a lot of fans are happy with only Ymir. Knows for the series' biggest mysteries. It's quite pathetic. The pathetic thing is your grammar. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, bro. Chill. Yeah, I don't think it was necessarily dog shit like you say it is, but I don't think it was like perfect by any means. I think a lot of things could be improved upon with that ending, but I do not think it's like under a 5 out of 10. Levi is overrated just because of his looks. I don't get when people say this. Levi is a really like tragic and deep character. Like if you watch his backstory and just everything with Levi and how he loses all his comrades and how he keeps fighting, just everything about that character is incredible like i don't get why people just base everything off his looks just because he's that cool character in the story i think he's a great character and has a lot of great development moments attack on titan no requiem is leagues better than chapter 139 Attack on Titan No Requiem could not happen if it was not for the 138 chapters that came before 139. So AOT NR is like kind of nothing to be honest because it's just retconned off Isayama's story. Same guy here, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the most overrated anime of all time. Well you see I wouldn't say it's the most overrated anime of all time but I do think it does get a lot more love than it deserves. Not saying it's bad I just don't think that the people who like FMAB have to constantly insist and push upon us that it's number one and that nothing can ever beat it. Like come on guys like seriously it's just an anime. Bleach doesn't fall off after Soul Society. I agree, Bleach is very, very good even after Soul Society. In fact, my favorite arc is Thousand Year Blood War. Kingdom is overrated and not as good as Vinland Saga and Vagabond. Okay, um, Kingdom I wouldn't say is overrated by any means. I hold Kingdom very, very highly in my opinion. I wouldn't say it's as good as Vagabond, but I would say it is better than Vinland Saga. This is all just subjective in my opinion, but I do think all three of those manga are like incredible in their own way. I don't think that Kingdom itself is overrated. I think, in fact, it's a phenomenal read. Berserk Trash LOL. I agree.